Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from KitGuru, and today I'll be taking a look at a pretty monstrous 360mm AIO cooler from Thermaltake, uh, the Thermaltake Water 3.0 360 ARGB sink. So let's kick off with the basics. As the name suggests, the 360 refers to a 360mm radiator and the ARGB, well, addressable RGB lighting. Pretty self-explanatory, really. The sync refers to software compatibility for the Water 3.0 360 uh, with current motherboard software and it's great to see that the Water 3.0 supports Asus Aura Sync, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, uh, MSI's Mystic Lighting Sync and ASRock's Polychrome software. Uh, so as long as your chosen motherboard supports a 3-pin addressable RGB header, you're basically covered. Priced at £158.99, with a bit of browsing, there are some equivalent 360mm coolers uh, available for a little bit less, maybe a bit closer to the £110 mark, uh, but it'll be interesting to see how the additional £50 is justified, uh, whether with features or from sheer performance. So let's take a look at the kit. The box, as expected, pretty vast considering the radiator size, and in the box we get some installation instructions, a large bag of mounting hardware for current Intel and AMD bounce, a bunch of additional cables and adapters for connecting up the three pin fans, as well as all of the lighting, and of course, three 120 mm RGB fans. The fans in question are Thermaltake Pure 12 ARGB sync radiator fans, uh, which feature a nine blade design and between 500 to 1500 RPM. Along with anti-vibration rubber mounts, each fan features a separate daisy chainable connector for lighting and a separate four pin PWM connector. Both cables are also coated in a black kind of rubber heat shrink like tubing, uh, which definitely helps with a cleaner aesthetic. One point to note is that a set of just the three fans uh, with a controller included, it is available for roughly 40 to 50 pounds, uh, which kind of does seem to justify the price of the Water 3.0. Taking a look at the cooler itself, for those who have any experience with older Corsair coolers, um, it's a pretty standard Acer Tech affair. There is a bit of a bulk to the CPU block thanks to the addition of the RGB lighting uh, for the Thermaltake logo, but otherwise mounting should be pretty familiar. The radiator itself comes in at 394 by 120 by 27 millimeters. I mean, nothing crazy here, but the tubing, although not braided, is a full 400 millimeters long, which is great. Tons of lengths to reach the front or top of your chosen case. Adding a little bit of length to the tubing is certainly appreciated, considering the number of slightly smaller ATX cases which can kind of only accommodate a 360mm radiator on the front of the case. The block does feature a copper base, but otherwise predominantly plastic. Not really a problem as it still feels solid, and little touches like adding a black rubber heat shrink to not only all of the fan cables, but also for powering the RGB lighting coming directly from the CPU block is a really nice touch. Installation being an Acertec manufactured cooler has been refined to absolute simplicity. For our Z170 test bench, all you need to do is adjust the mount on the back plate to ensure they will pass through the motherboard mounting holes and sit the back plate in place. Four double threaded standoffs can then be screwed in to hold the back plate in place. The block does need to be set up with its own specific mounting bracket. Uh, one is included for Intel and for AMD and the bracket can be clipped on using the plastic retention mounts. Thermal compound is included, but as per usual, this was removed and replaced to ensure consistency with our testing. With our thermal paste applied, mounting the block is a simple case of placing it atop your CPU and firmly tightening it down with the four included thumb screws. Overall, a pretty basic process, which only takes around about five minutes. As I mentioned, for anyone with experience mounting an older Acetec cooler, the process is basically the same. Connecting up lighting does take a little bit more attention, um, included with the Thermaltake Water 3.0 360 is not only a SATA powered controller, uh, but also two adapters for syncing lighting being your motherboard's ARGB header. As our test board doesn't support this, I elected to use the controller. Each fan features a male and female proprietary connection for the RGB lighting, uh, so they are daisy chainable, which is really good if you're looking to expand by adding additional Thermaltake fans. For lighting, you just need to connect the fans together along with the ARGB cable coming directly from the CPU block. A three port, four pin PWM adapter is included to connect all of your fans to your CPU fan header. And there is a separate three pin fan cable for powering the Water 3.0's pump. With everything installed and cables all connected, we can move on to testing. At KitGuru, we test CPU coolers on the Z170 platform, 
Uh, for our CPU, we are testing with the Intel Core i7-7700K, installed in an Asus Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard. Uh, for RAM, we have a single 8GB stick of Guile Evo X RGB, uh, running at 3200MHz, and storage is handled by a 120GB Samsung SSD+. Powering our bench is a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. When testing, we take a number of readings with the i7-7700K's Turbo Locked, uh, overclocked to 4.5 GHz and also 5 GHz to really push those thermal limits. The temperatures taken are delta T values, meaning we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details of our full testing methodology can of course be found on kitguru.net. And on to the results. Starting with our 4 GHz stock profile, uh, performance as you would expect, pretty outstanding for such a large cooler, even surpassing the next closest option, the Asus ROG Ridge in 360. If you're not looking to overclock, you can sit safe in the knowledge that the Thermaltake Water 3.0 360A RGB will keep your CPU very frosty, but realistically, you're going to be installing this cooler with an intention to reach some higher speeds. Uh, so let's move on to 4.5 GHz. At 4.5, still great performance, only really being outpaced by the H100i from Corsair, but still, the Water 3.0 takes silver medal, again, to some extent expected from a much larger radiator cooler. Impressively, the Water 3.0 is still running ahead of its closest competition, the Ryogen 360, by a couple of degrees or so. Not a huge amount between them, uh, but when considering the difference in cost, it's actually pretty impressive. Ramping up to 5 GHz, little changes, although the Water 3.0 360 ARGB does move into third place, dropping behind the Ryogen 360 for the very first time. Part of this could be attributed to the Ryogen's additional CPU block fan, which is kind of intended to help with VRM cooling, but will of course have some impact on the CPU itself and potentially the surrounding area. This being said, although we do have some quieter coolers tested, the Water 3.0 360 still offers some pretty reasonable acoustics, uh, kind of middle of the pack, which is understandable considering the extra fan installed. Although the Ryogen found itself ahead in our 5 GHz testing, the trade-off is much more noticeable audible noise. Overall, a solid option for heavy overclocking, but without too much of a trade-off in the noise department. So, the coolest build is solid and has good support for even much larger cases, uh, and performance kind of as expected improves over a 240mm or even a 280mm cooler, but one of the core features of the Thermal Tech Water 3.0 is its lighting, so let's take a look. As mentioned, the lighting was all controlled through the included controller, and for modes there are a number to choose from, like flow and ripple, pulse, blink, wave, static, and of course the full RGB spectrum. The controller also gives you some options for speed and color transitions, and color in modes like static and pulse as well. Transitions, thanks to the addressable nature of the RGBs, are really nice and smooth, and pretty seamless actually. There definitely is a bit of a wow factor considering the sheer number of fans and therefore LEDs you are installing. One pretty cool option I came across hidden in the single colour modes like Static and Pulse is still a full RGB colour range that kind of follows those selected modes. You can essentially have a full rainbow of colours pulsating on and off or staying completely still, perfect for those who like the full kind of RGB effect without shifting from colour to colour. Lighting was basically exactly what I expected, easily enough modes and colours to keep you happy with the included controller, and of course with support for basically every motherboard manufacturer's RGB sync lighting software standard, there is always the potential to connect the cooler directly to your motherboard's internal header. So to summarise, at the end of the day the Thermaltake Water 3.0 360 ARGB sync actually lived up to my expectations. Firstly, on a performance front, the cooler sat within the top three of each of our different clock speed tests, uh, which is kind of to be expected considering the larger surface area of its radiator. In terms of its construction, it's a pretty simple piece of Acer Tech kit, if you disregard the lighting, say for instance. This actually makes it a bit more impressive when you consider the nearest competitor, the Asus Ryogen 360, uh, which is actually quite a bit dearer. Clearly, from our testing, it's going to do a really good job of keeping your CPU cool, even if you are overclocking. Lighting also works really well, and is as kind of fully RGB as you would want. And even when not connecting to the motherboard's header and configuring through software, the included controller offers a bunch of modes, even some pretty unique ones. In terms of value for money, the £158.99 uh, 
Uh, it may seem a little bit steep considering there are some cheaper 360mm AIO coolers available, but when you add on the three RGB fans and their controller, if you're looking for a large addressable RGB cooler to deal with some significantly higher temps, the Thermaltake Water 3.0 360 ARGB sink is actually a pretty balanced option. But let us know what you think in the comments. Um, just as with AIO coolers when they very first emerged, uh, we are seeing not only better support with cases for 360mm radiators, uh, but also more of them reaching market. Would the added performance benefits of a larger radiator size outweigh the added cost, or would you be happy sticking with a more traditional, say, 240 or 280 millimeter radiator? Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, or even a dislike, it's a little bit less fun, and feel free to hit subscribe if you would like to see more videos from KitGuru. If you want to be alerted when new videos are released, click the bell icon below. I've been Silas from KitGuru, and I will see you in the next one.